Well, hey everybody, Matt Kleskowski here with a second bonus video in celebration of my luminosity masking course. It's a free video to watch. And in fact, I would encourage you, even if you are not remotely interested in luminosity masking, I would encourage you to watch this video because the video is really more about how to refine and help try to perfect uh, a layer mask, okay? Whether it's got a fancy name like a luminosity mask, it doesn't matter. A mask is a mask. It's got black and white on it and that's all. So no matter how that mask was created, no matter why, if it was created as a selection for something, if you're doing a layer mask, whatever it happens to be, uh, these three techniques will help you refine and start to help perfect and really target the areas of the layer mask that you wanna work with. Also, if you wanna find out more about luminosity masking, you can watch the first bonus video. Uh, it was called, What the Heck is Luminosity Masking? So make sure you go check that out. And I do hope you'll stop by mattk.com slash luminosity to find out more, okay? So let's go ahead and dive into the tutorial here. Now, in our first photo, we're going to start off pretty simple. It's, you know, you, you, you probably have even seen these tools before for, uh, especially for this first one, but I think it's an important concept to, to remember here. So, um, I've gone in, I've already created a whole bunch of luminosity masks via an action, um, for this photo. And so let's say as an example, let's say I'm, I'm going to go to one of my darks max masks, which is going to, it's going to let me adjust the dark areas in the photo. But let's say in this photo, I really only wanted to adjust the dark areas in the foreground. I really want to leave the sky out of it. And whenever we look at a mask, the main thing to remember is, is whenever we use this mask, whatever we see white is what's going to be selected. And it's going to get whatever we do, whatever we do to that mask, it's, it's going to get the effect. And then whatever we see as black is not going to get the effect. It's not going to be selected. So let's say we decided this is the mask that we want to use. Okay. What I would do is command or control click on it, and that's going to put a selection around everything uh, on that mask, anything that would be selected, which is going to be in the white areas. And then I could go click on my RGB layer back over to my layers panel. And let's just say as an example here, I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer. It automatically uses that mask because I had a selection and I could kind of boost up my darks if I want to. But here's the thing about refining this is that I need to, I didn't want it to, as you, as you, if you look at this, it's actually working on the sky as well. It's doing something to the sky because that was kind of selected and you can see it. If you option or alt click on the layer mask itself, you'll be able to see that mask. And remember what's white is what's selected and being affected by my curves layer. What's black is not. Well, this is kind of gray, which means it still is being affected by this. So what you could do is, is remember a, a mask takes black or white. It doesn't care how you get it there, right? So we could take our brush tool and uh, set our foreground color to black because I would want to make this whole sky black if I don't want it touched, all right? And I could just brush and paint over here and paint in this sky in black, all right? So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, and this is the one a lot of people miss, is, and this is what I would use in this photo, is rather than brushing and trying to get in that, that whole area, I would just take my lasso tool. It's not, it's, not, it's not one of those tools you're gonna use a lot. It's not one of those tools you use when, when you need precision. But in a case like this, it actually works out really well where I would just do a rough lasso because all of that is black. Everything, everything underneath where I'm lassoing is black. And then I would just do a rough lasso like this, take it all the way around the photo like that. Now I have a selection. Now I can fill that selection with black. Uh, if you know the keyboard shortcuts, go ahead and use them the long way. Edit, fill, fill with your foreground color, which happens to be black. Bam. Now I've gone in there and I've, I've refined that mask. I've helped perfect to get to the areas that I just need it. I've helped do that on, on a, in a very quick way. Okay. It's a little, it doesn't work for everything, but it can really come in handy and I use it quite often. Okay, so that is one. Let's go ahead and delete that layer. Now, another thing that we can do here is let's go, let's go back over to uh, all of the luminosity masks that I've created here. And let's start clicking through. Let's say I wanted to affect the sky in this example here. So I would start looking through my brights masks to figure out which one um, was a good one to work on the sky. And what I'm looking for is something that's got my foreground as black as possible. And the reason being is because I know ahead of time, 
I can use the trick that I'm about to show you. Okay. And that's, that's why I'm not look like normally you might look at this and say, well, the sky is whiter in here and that's, what's going to be selected. But there's so much in the foreground here where this one got a little bit more, it got, got a little bit more black in the foreground. It's going to leave me less work to do later. Okay. So let's go ahead and command or control click to load that mask as a selection just on that, uh, that mask layer here. I'm going to go over to my layers panel. And uh, and by the way, guys, I know that I'm doing this on luminosity mask. It, it doesn't matter how you created the mask. And that's really the main thing to remember here. It doesn't matter how you created the mask. It's This works on all masks. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Uh, let's add that curves adjustment layer. And now you can see I can start to adjust things and I can pull that sky up. But I'm also pulling up a lot of detail here in the foreground. Well, what we can do is let's close that. Let's go hold down our option or alt key, click on that layer mask again. That's going to load that. It doesn't load it. It just shows us the mask view of what's going on there rather than the actual photo. And then what we do is we go, we go into levels. So image adjustments levels. It's not a levels adjustment layer. All right. It's not going to be a non-destructive thing. We are, we're going to be destructive to this mask, but that's a good thing. So we're going to go into levels. It's going to open up that levels dialog box. And then what we want to do is we want to make this mask more contrasty. So first thing I would do is start pulling over my white slider and look at what happens there. See, see how all of this starts to become white right now. All of the sky is partially selected. And remember, that's what we want to work on but it's only partially selected because it's got different degrees of gray and white in here. And so as I move my curves adjustment, it's only going to adjust it partially. And I really want, I want to work on the entire sky. So I start to contrast or firm up this mask by dragging my levels adjustment. And then again, I can pull the blacks in a little bit, try to darken up some of that transition. All right. Now this is a good one because it gets me close. Okay. It gets me really close. If I keep going like this, I'm probably like there, I'm introducing a lot of white into the, the bottom part of the mask, which we can adjust in a second here. Um, and, and that's not a bad thing. Okay. In fact, I'll show you exactly what to do with it, but I'll leave it a little bit off because now it shows you that I can click. Okay. And I've got this all to be white, which means when I go and I adjust, my, my uh, curve over here. So maybe I want to pull that sky down. All of that white area is getting affected. Let's option or alt click on this again. I still have this area up here. That's not now we can mix the two. So now I can take my, my lasso and I don't really care about my buddy here. We I'm okay. If he starts to get affected as well. And I can just take my lasso tool, lasso that whole area, edit, fill, set, uh, set this to white, click. Okay. Bam. So now I've got that whole sky white and then I can do the same thing in reverse down here. I can just take my lasso tool and be pretty rough about it. I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to get all the way to the edges, but that's all these little nooks and crannies on the rocks. You would never, ever see uh, that detail anyway. And that's a big part of editing is knowing when to pick your battles. So I would just do that. And then again, edit fill. If you know the keyboard shortcuts, do it. I'm not going to go spout out all ton, kinds of tons of keyboard shortcuts here, but fill that with black. Now, when I make an adjustment here, now you can see I've got a lot better of a mask to work on that sky. So we did the levels adjustment, which is going to come in really handy. But at the same time, we kind of, we kind of started, we went back to what we used the first time because that's going to happen a lot. Sometimes the levels adjustment will get you all the way there. Sometimes it'll really give you enough contrast to separate your whites from your blacks, because that's really what we're after here. We're after, if we want a clean edge on there, if we want to be working on our sky, then we have to get that all white. If there's gray or different shades of gray in it, it means it's not all selected. And you saw what was happening earlier when we did that, we were seeing all this weird stuff happening up in the sky there. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on to... Last example here, and this one's really cool. So uh, what we'll do is let's head back over to our channels and I want to do something to the foreground here. Okay. I decided I want to make uh, things brighter, a little bit brighter, the tree, especially the trees. 
And so what I would do is, is once I create my luminosity mask, I kind of look through and I find a mask that find a mask that for the most part has the sky black because remember black won't be selected and then has the trees uh, mostly white. Okay. And this is actually a pretty good example here. So it's got the trees mostly white. The sky is mostly black, not perfect, but pretty darn close. So let's go ahead, command or control click on that. And that will load that as a selection. Click on our RGB composite layer back over to the layers palette. And then we will add the same curves adjustment layer we've been using here. And I said, I want to make the trees a little bit brighter so I can do just that. Let's, uh, let's zoom in and kind of pull this over so we can see what's going on up here. Well, as you can see, it's, it's working on the trees, but it's not totally working on the trees. It's actually flattening them out a little bit. And it's actually got some of the sky up here that it's working on as well. Oh, let's not drag two points on that curve. There we go. So it's doing a little bit more than, than we want it to. Well, let's go over here and option or alt click so that we can get the mask view of what's going on in here. And we can see that although the trees are mostly white, they're not totally white, all right? There's a lot of gray in there. And that means, that means those areas are not quite as selected as the bright white stuff is. And, and I don't want that. I want them to be all equally selected. I want basically want all of these trees and all the detail to be white. So how am I gonna get that detail? Here's what you do. B for your brush tool. Head over here to the, the toolbox, choose your brush tool. And um, in this case, let's go ahead. We're gonna change the, bl the blend mode's usually set to normal, okay? But instead we're gonna change it to overlay. And how this works is you just paint with that overlay blend mode and watch what happens. See that? See, even though my brush is larger, it's not spilling over into that background and it's filling in all those gray gaps for me. And then I can do the same thing in reverse. I can switch this foreground from white to black and then look up here because I've got this black area. Of course, it'll, I'll do fine there, but watch as I get down toward the trees. Look at that. It might eat away at a couple of the edges, but guys, there, there's very, very rarely a case where there's an absolute that you're not gonna touch it. And in this case, it's done pretty darn good. Again, when I switch this back over to white, and especially now that it's all black and white, I don't really have to worry about it. See, as I paint there, look. And then switch that back over to black. Look like it was showing a little bit. The other thing too, lower your opacity. Lower your opacity because I don't want it to mix into the trees too much. And so it'll build up and it'll do a better job of building up on those blacks without infringing over onto my whites, okay? And then if I option or alt click on that again, just to reveal the regular view, take a look. So you can see we're restricting our adjustments to our trees. I am gonna do something here. I'm just gonna undo a whole bunch of times because I wanna do the same thing that I just did, but I wanna do it while you're looking at the photo. Cause it's one thing to look at the mask while you're doing it, but I want you to see the effect that it has on the photo as well. So we got our curves adjustment layer. Uh, we went in here, we brightened everything. Of course, it's, it's kind of flattening out the trees. So again, click on that layer mask to target it. B for your brush tool, let's go paint on the trees. We know we want them to be white because that's gonna be affected by this. And then I'm painting. In fact, I can probably crank this up to 100%. We'll be fine. And you'll see it's not giving me halos. I'm not getting the little fringes. I'm able to go in here and it's not messing with the sky. It's only messing on all of that little detail that we have inside of there. And that's because we have that overlay blend mode. So experiment a little bit with your opacity if you find it's bleeding into another thing. But hopefully just take these as all little kind of tricks and tips to put into your put into that little repertoire that you have. So whenever you see a selection, you kind of have this little checklist of things that you can go down through and, uh, and try to improve that selection, okay? Folks, hope you enjoyed this and uh, make sure you stop by mattk.com slash luminosity to find out more.